Hey guys, it's me again. I uh, just finished part eight again. Spoilers for the first eight Friday the 13th movies if you've never seen them. <clears throat> Alright, spoilers. Actually, and spoilers for the other films in the series as well, including the 2009 reboot. So, spoilers on everything. <laughs> Make it simple. Uh, this video, um, off the cuff as I usually do, just kind of going through the points. Um, I'll start right now, I guess, with saying that part eight is probably for me. It's probably the weakest in the series. Um, mainly because... I guess some of the things are kind of illogical. Like the fact that the boat that the kids were on in the beginning somehow ends up like from Crystal Lake and it ends up in the ocean. So, I mean, <clears throat> that could do with just the time frame of all the films and the continuity is like what it is. So, you know, there, there could have ended up, Crystal Lake could have been merged with the ocean or something. I don't know. And that's how that caused that. But anyway, part eight is kind of the weakest one for me. Uh, my favorites. Um, seeing as I watched the movies again, part six was pretty much my favorite. Part seven, I enjoy because of Zombie Jason, you know, um, to go through them now. Uh, I think I really enjoy the movies in part because of like, you know, like Jason being like a cool character, you know, um, like the different kills and everything, um, the continuity between the films. More or less how they like kind of sort of connect with each other, how the films, um, I think part three, part three, part four, part five had a little bit, uh, how they have flashbacks, like part five, like how they have Corey Feldman came back for that and showed him having like a dream. Um, but that was a cool cinematic like sequence there. But I like how they have references like they do in, uh, in uh, Freddy vs. Jason, how they have, like, they take, like, because um, I love continuity. I love how in Freddy vs. Jason they, like, take a clip from every single Friday, uh, every single Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Like, they include every single movie, like, a, a clip from every, of those, every one of those movies in the montage in the beginning, which I thought was beautiful, you know? Because, um, actually, spoilers for the Friday the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, too. Um, at least to a certain extent here. How, um, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, for me, I thought was always very, like, kind of too goofy or something. Like, like kind of like too, like, not goofy or cartoonish, really, but kind of like, I don't know. It was just kind of like, I didn't like the style, I guess. But it kind of... You know, I watched it again when I watched the whole series, and I kind of, I liked it better, you know, than before, I guess you could say. You know, like I was more acclimatized to it, or whatever. We'll leave it at that. But uh, the continuity of the Friday the 13th movies, I guess because Paramount owned the rights up until, like, part 8, and then part, well, part 9, which is... Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Like that one, Jason X and Freddy vs. Jason were, like, were all new lines, so they were a different studio. Um, Kane Hodder played Jason in Jason Goes to Hell and um, Jason X, right? He played Jason in, in part seven, it's like, uh, you know... And, and part eight as well. So, like, you played him in four movies, right? And Sean S. Cunningham produced the first Friday the 13th, which didn't really have Jason as, like, he is... Because Jason didn't get his iconic hockey mask until part three. You know, he took it off Shelly. So... Which is cool. I, you know, I like how, like, in, like, the second one, Jason's got, like, kind of the bag over his head kind of thing. I like how... The iconic stature of these series, like, they, the things become iconic because, you know, things aren't tracked in the beginning throughout, like, 
the first Friday the 13th, you know, you don't have Jason as, like, the killer. It's just, you know, like a MacGuffin, maybe. Whereas in, this, in part two, they actually have him start as the actual main, like the actual killer, but they don't have his hockey mask yet because it didn't exist yet. It wasn't a planned thing. You know, I don't know how it ended up in, in part three. You know, I don't know where the idea came from. You know, I don't know about that. I haven't read that, and if I have, I don't recall it. Sorry if my videos are rambling. I mean, if you enjoy, I guess, listening to Easter eggs about things off the cuff, just one after the other, then that's then it's worthwhile. But I enjoy how, like, uh, I never, now that I've watched the movies again and I've, like, read stuff about it before and everything, um, you realize that um, the first Friday the 13th, it takes place at one time, and then, like, Part two starts with Alice, who gets killed like two months after the events of Friday the 13th. And part two, like the actual movie, takes place a couple of years after, you know, part one or or just two months after Friday the 13th or whatever. But then like part three and four take place like just at like days, like a day after like, one day after, and then another day after is part four or something. So, like, Friday the 13th, part two through four take place over the course of, like, two or three days. And, like, um, just interesting to realize that, you know, and then it maps it out in your brain more, the way you visualize, like, continuity and how things work together, you know. You know, I like, I like stuff like that. I love the MCU. Marvel Studios, I really love Marvel Studios. You know, I would have loved to have seen, like, those movies. I was watching this right now, and I, in the New York sequence, like, towards the end, in my mind, when I was listening to the music, I was, I was imagining what an Avengers universe would have looked like back in, like, the 80s in this time. I was, like, just visualizing it in my head. I was just picturing, like, say, the, like, the Avengers being in this universe in the movie, just to give myself a basis for, for, uh, reference, um, or, like, Marvel characters, I, I mean, being there, and just imagining them in that universe, doing the things that they're doing, and imagining, like, the plots and those kind of things in my mind, and, you know, that's how you can, you get, like, feelings like that, you can discover, you know, new feelings like that, or listening to music and combining visuals with music, and then... You just reach these different, different mental, um, emotional um, experiences. It's a wonderful thing, you know. It's, I suppose it's like some, I've always tried to. I enjoy looking in the distance at something, you know, and not maybe not exactly imagining what's going on there, but it's like if you look in the distance, you see this distant tower, and then you just imagine like what's going on there. You know, it's like this distant thing, like, you can sort of equate it to, like, in movies where you see, like, something going on, like, there's some, like, climax going on with characters, you know, in this big thing in movies, but then you can imagine being somebody, like, just a r average Joe or whatever, who is, like, tw you know, like, 15 miles away, and they look over where this climax is taking place, and all they see is, like, just this tower, you know, or, um really good example is Stephen King's It, when, you know, um, spoilers for that, too, while we're at it, you know, it's just, um, if you're not familiar, but when the kids go after Pennywise or It in the sewers, I mean, just imagine the people at Derry just going about their, like, their lives when these kids are fighting, like, you know, monsters underground, it's just, it's just glorious, like, this whole, you know, you think that, like, monsters, like, a, like, a real thing, but they're, like, not, I guess, it's, like, it's, how I think of, like, magic is kind of, like, I think, like, filling in the blanks, it's, like, your, your resolution, you, it's, like, a microscope, magic is kind of what goes on beyond the extent to which you can see. It'd be beyond the extent of details, like, 
it's just like the details beyond the details you can see. That's how I imagine magic to kind of be. Um, because it really is, it's like magic is, I mean, it's definitely, magic is also like seeing something like supernatural, right? Like a dragon or like some kind of creature that you've seen like in a movie that, that wasn't actually real, like that was made with makeup and everything like, like it, but like, it's actually like in, in real life, it's like this imaginary thing is real, you know? So I'm like on, on a tangent, you know, I start talking about something and I, and I jump into something and I enjoy it. So, you know, it's always good for me just to talk about these things. I don't know if people watch these videos extensively. I mean, I've done a ton of these videos. Like this is my third time doing this YouTube channel, like I said, because these past two times I just set all my videos to private. So I've got like hundreds of videos now, a couple, a couple hundred anyway, but I want to, try to keep it a little more mainstream in that I, um, it's, I do less fumbling because I do this off the cuff, as you can see. So I retread a lot of the same ground over and over again. And I am sorry about that. Um, so that's all I'll say about the series for now because I got to watch the other ones again. Uh, but they're, they're pretty much the same continuity anyway because the, they're still just all part of the 13th movies. Although there probably is something to be said where it's made by different studios. But then again, it's... You know, it depends on who has, I guess, kind of power and influence over the, the final picture. You know, that, that you at least have actors like, you know, like Kane Hodder, who is part of... Part... Well, part nine and part ten, or as in you know, Jason goes to hell the final Friday, and um, Jason X, um, and also Sean Cunningham is was a producer for Jason goes to hell the final Friday, and he was a producer on the original Friday the Thirteenth. Like I said, and it's like there is there's there are tethers between those things. You know, it's like, it's like, like the connection with family and stuff. Like you can look at like blood being like blood related to people is strictly like you see them as your family. And if they're not blood related to you, then they're not your family. But again, you can just, you can look at it as being like, we're all, let's say we're all the same, we're all beings. You know, you look at it like that, or like you can look at these movies, like they're all, they're all bound by the same principle, which is like this, the character Jason or, you know, the different themes or what those things stand for in the public eye. So that even, even if you get a writer on all that, every single different movie, it's like all these movies have different writers and different directors, right? But but they embraced the movies before, which is beautiful. That's I love that. I love the continuity. I love the embracement, um, the connection, like the family between those things, like the appreciation, which, like I said, I, like part eight, like I was saying, I think is probably the, probably the weakest film, you know, as far as like overall the way it flows and everything. I think it's kind of like the weakest film for me in the whole series, at least so far. Um, but again, I, I appreciate how they reference one another and they're all part of the same story, you know, which is wonderful. So I'll catch you later. Okay. Y'all enjoy your night or your day or, you know, till we meet again. Remember. Zombie Jason's where it's at.